Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of Force Color Wednesdays. After the last episode, I ended up choosing a much better reference photo to work from as I learnt my lesson. It allowed me to paint far more confidently and with a lot more detail and realism too. So to start with, the composition of this one's a little different. It's one page this time and there's a little bit of a background surrounding the fish. It's not a background that covers the whole page, but it gives the painting a bit of context. It looks like muddy water, like from a fresh water river or something like that. And the background has been blended so it fades out into the white of the page. So there's still quite a lot of negative space, but it's not just a fish floating in white space. It made quite a nice change to actually have more of a background this time. It's only been this painting and the last one where there's actually been some form of background. So I think I might end up doing one more where there isn't a background. And then see how I feel before I take it further. And the thing I'd just like to mention is how much of a surprising difference having a background can make. Even if it's not even covering the entire page. It can help set a mood or establish a setting. Or it can work similar to how mid-tone paper works in that it lets your eyes see values relative to the background rather than the pure white of the page. And it means when you're painting, your eye finds it easier to see where the lighter and darker values should be, and how light or dark to go to get a good range of values. So I'm just going to talk a bit more about the painting. There's lots of green and blue tones this time, and I ended up refining the detail of the eye pretty early on compared to the last paintings that I've done. The fish scales were added with small amounts of watercolour and it allowed me to let them bleed into the paint that was still wet so the edges of it are quite feathered and textured. The greens were darkened towards the end and I ended up working back over some of the body with white gouache. I don't think it was truly necessary on the body because it ended up toning down a bit of the contrast in the end. Another slight alteration is that I didn't end up working back over the scales with the feathered edges. So it ended up looking quite a bit more experimental and expressive this way. I wasn't so keen on it when I first painted it, but now that a little bit of time has passed, I think my opinion on it might have grown a bit. I think my favourite thing about this painting is actually the way the background turned out rather than the fish itself. It's nice to get a glimpse of the fish's environment and it looks like it's swimming through it. It might have been better if I placed one of the strands of the plant that's there in front of the fish instead of behind it, so it'll look more like it's swimming through the actual plant, which might make it look more three-dimensional and interactive as well. I hadn't thought of doing that before I started painting this, otherwise it might have been more of an idea to map out a space to place the plant in front of the fish, or try using something like masking fluid, which I'm planning to try soon, I've got some in my drawer. So overall, I'm quite happy with how this little sort of experimenting backgrounds turned out and I'd like to do more in the future and maybe try really shaking things up and try having more of a crowded image with not just one fish but lots of them. And that's all for now. Hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Bye!